And at the time, I had been working for the Nebraska Farm Crisis Hotline, and we also had gone through the mediation process um, with our lenders because of our financial problems. And David, through FarmAid, had contacted both the hotline and the mediation services, and they both said that they knew the perfect family for this, and both those agencies led him to us. And I guess I just saw it as an opportunity to be able to show other farmers who were having our similar problems that they weren't alone and, and that there are people out there willing to help and that believe in family farms as much as they did. Farmers are really proud people and they don't like to let people know they're having problems and that also keeps them from getting help though when they need it. So as field staff, I, it was nice to be able to help them on a one-to-one -one basis and when David came around and you know it was the opportunity to do the film I guess I thought there was the opportunity to help farmers. I guess one thing that kind of inspired me to do this film uh, after things got tough for us I had to go to town and work in a factory to help bring home uh, enough money to buy groceries and some of the guys I worked with had no idea what the farm was like you know and some of the comments they made and this and that I, I wanted to open it up to the public let them know what we actually lived through and you know and what it meant to put your heart into your work because a lot of them, you know, just went day by day just to do what they had to do for the paycheck and, you know, I just couldn't understand that. David was up front with us from the beginning that he wanted to get very personal into filming. Like he said, he's a portraitist and he just wanted to film a year in the life is what we understood at the time and just to go about our business and the camera would follow and, um, I guess we didn't have any problem with that. I, we weren't feeling we had a whole lot of privacy anyway through having to deal, you know, through the government with our loan and everything, so. Yeah, living in a small town, you know, there's not such a thing as privacy, you know, I mean, everybody knows everybody's business, and so that really wasn't a big issue with us either. I was intent on that we were going to make our marriage work, and Daryl was intent, you know, that the farm was going to work, and no matter if the camera was there or not, we were going to do it. When we first saw the film, it was, um, it was tough for me to watch, but only because it was really true life for us, and it was seeing our last three years of our life played out, and there were a lot of tough times, and I guess you know, a part of you wants to forget those times ever happened, but it, watching the film, it really reminded you of it. Um, I know I had gotten a lot of advice from you know other friends and that, that I could do this or do that to look like the perfect farm way for the perfect family, but uh, for some reason I wasn't able to do that and what was filmed was just definitely real life. I think the kids are really excited about the film. Um, they made it clear to us, you know, different times they didn't want, when they didn't want the fi cameras to go somewhere they would tell us that and I think both of our families were skeptical of the whole film. Um, if we would have listened to I think either one of our families we probably wouldn't have done it, but for some reason, we just knew it was the thing to do, and and our families, I think, now are more supportive just because we have seen it and we know what it is. For one thing, sometimes the our financial problems that first were so intense, and then of course our marriage problems became so intense that I guess the camera was just kind of, you know, a, wasn't a big issue. It was we had so many problems right in front of us that. And I, th I think David liked that part of it because he wanted us to forget about the camera and so it wasn't hard to do. There was a crew, there was him, and then, then there was a, a cameraman and the sound man. There was three of them all the time. And then David, of course, would always have to somehow be out of frame. And we have a very small house and a lot of times he would hide in my pantry down the hallway and as they were filming, you know, Daryl and I would be in the kitchen talking and I'd be cooking supper or whatever. And, David, I thought he just got hysterical one time because I went, they were filming and I went to put something away in the pantry and I just handed it in to him. <laughs> and I, I guess he didn't think that I knew he was there. <laughs> when the film first started, um, we had just gotten our um, farmer's home loan and it was still really rocky. We had a lot of bills that were left unpaid and had a lot of, you know, unsecured debt. And things were going in the right direction, but we knew, you know, a couple bad years would still push us out. Um, we wouldn't have been farming if it wasn't for Farmers Home. They were the lender of last resort and they were there for us, but of course in the fall of 95 it ended up freezing early and we raised an awful crop. And But luckily they restructured with us and we were able to go another year and 
96, we prayed and prayed, and we ended up having a bumper crop, and that really pushed us over the edge. We were able to pay off a lot of the debt. And right now, things are looking pretty good. Back in the 80s, early 80s, you heard a lot about the farm crisis, and it kind of died down, you know, and people, you know, people think, you know, there's no more farm crisis, and I think it's a lot greater now than it was back then. So I think it's even more important to open up and let people know that, you know, something needs to be done before it's too late. And it's not going to take long for a lot more farms to disappear. Every time somebody retires anymore, you don't see a young guy take it over. It's some big outfit comes in and adds to theirs, you know, so that's kind of sad too, I think. I don't know of a farm couple myself where one of them doesn't work off the farm. There's just not enough income on the farm. Um, I said the farms, I think they're saying that they're, we're losing 30,000 farms a year, and that's 600 family farms a week. Just in our area, corporations are coming in and buying the ground for outrageous prices that it's not worth. We can't afford to buy it for that. And I said, it's. I really believe the country will be sorry when the day comes that family farms aren't the ones who are being stewards of the land and, and raising the country's food because we really truly do care about the land. I have to be honest, I really cannot foresee the way things are going right now, if they continue, I don't see that we will ever be able to retire on the farm because of the falling grain prices, the increase in input costs. I don't see that we're going to have the chance to stay out here unless something changes. And I, I think there is hope. There's enough people out there fighting for us. I do think that something can happen, and I hope to be a part of it to keep us family farms going. Um, and if you know, God forbid that would happen that we would ever have to quit. I would still, I believe in family farms enough. I hope to be a part of fighting to keep them going. I hope that farmers watching it um, can see that if they're having problems that they're not alone and that they can reach out for help when they need it um, and that those who aren't having as bad problems right now can that we can all pull together and us farmers can unite somehow and I hope that people who don't farm realize the importance of keeping the family farms going. I think by a lot of a lot of people even farming or small business or whatever see that we can open up and and uh, you know let everybody see the problems that we got. I, mean, I think that'll help them out maybe too you know. If somebody had asked us in the beginning to do what this turned out to be we probably would have never agreed to it. It's probably a good thing that we had no idea that it was going to turn out this big, but somebody asked me once if I'd ever do it again, and I would probably say yes. Um, I feel really strong that, you know, I, I want people to realize they can fight for their dream if they really believe in it and believe in themselves.